from Hollywood, the National Broadcasting Company presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, production, The Senator Was Indiscreet, star, William Powell... Each week at this new time, the Hollywood screen directors will bring you the finest adaptations of your favorite motion picture entertainment, together with the stars who created the original roles. Now, tonight's story. For the first time on the air, we present the film comedy, The Senator Was Indiscreet, starring William Powell as Senator Ashton, with Peggy Dow as Poppy McNaughton. Any similarity between this story and a coincidence is purely comical. For we all know that in these United States, there is no such thing as a tub-thumping, hand-pumping, baby-kissing politician. (laughs) Nevertheless, Senator Melvin Gassaway Ashton has left Washington to descend upon New York, where even now he takes his regal ease in his hotel room and records the fact in his diary. Perhaps this is the beginning of the campaign that will see me in the White House. Oh, to be the leader of this proud nation and make 100000 a year. <laughs> Come in. Hiya, Mel. Oh, it's you, Lou. Senator, don't ever say that Lou Gibson isn't the greatest publicity man since the guy who promoted Hash. You know what I got outside? Well, if it's constituent, my boy, I'll make a speech. <clears throat> uh, my friends... Save it. I got a crew of newsreel cameramen and three, count them, three full-blooded Indians. Oh, my boy, my boy, how can I thank you? Okay, fellas, start setting up. Okay, okay, my, sit my, the camera right won't, here. Won't Mama be pleased when she hears about this? Uh, here they are, Senator. Three full-blooded Indians gonna make you a member of their savage tribe. Say hello, Senator. How? Hi, you, Senator. What's new in Washington? Where's the washroom? <laughs> uh, me bring him greetings from Great White Father. Say, can a member of the press intrude? Poppy, darling, come on in. Senator, meet Miss Poppy McNaughton, the best newspaper gal in town. Welcome, my child, welcome. Thank you, Senator. I'm here to ask about that new bill you've introduced, the McCoy-Keith Ashton bill. Oh, yes, yes. Well, uh, that bill, my dear, is designed for the protection of man's most faithful servant. Oh, yes, the Maytag washing machine. (laughs) I mean, the letter carrier. Why is the letter carrier weary at the end of the day? Because he's tired. Because he's been trudging the hard pavements with a load too heavy for man to bear. And that is where my bill comes in. The McCoy-Keith Ashton bill will compel every man, woman, and child in this fair land to write his letters on tissue paper. (laughs) Oh, I see. Uh, Lou, could I speak to you outside for a minute, please? Sure, honey. Uh, You talk to the cameraman, Senator. Oh, thank you, my boy. (coughs) Uh, my friends of the motion picture industry, proudest jewel in the diadem of American entertainment. Well, Poppy, isn't he a beaut? Lou, you're not pumping up that windbag for president. Look, I'm a press agent. If I can promote Ashton, I'll be in the big time. Then we'll be able to get married. Oh, those are very tough turns. Oh, Poppy, give Ashton a break in your column. Don't be difficult. I won't. I'll be impossible. How? I'm just going to quote him accurately. That's how. Oh, that's dirty journalism. You can't quote politicians accurately. You just watch me. See you tonight, publicity man. Tonight it is. Okay, boys, ready with the newsreel? Anytime. Roll them. Okay, Senator, you're on. From Great White Father in Washington, I bring message to Red Man. My Manitou, me Manitou, give you much rain. How? How? Much good hunting. How? How? Many fine squaws. And And how? how. (laughs) Okay, okay, Hiawatha.
right, that, that does it. Let's oh, go, no. boy. <laughs> when you, uh, uh, how did you write the... Uh-oh. Oh. What's the matter? Look. Standing over there. When did he come in? What? Oh, brother. Fred Houlihan, the boss of the party. Oh, uh... <clears throat> uh oh, well, ha- hello, Fred. Hello, Senator. Well, many ha-ha, what are you trying to pull? Oh, just a little stunt, Fred. Uh, uh, Lou Gibson dreamt it up. Oh, he did. Mel, don't you know that having a picture taken with an Indian automatically makes you a candidate for president? Well, if well, you don't no, mind, no, I think no, I'll go no. back don't, to my office. Don't, don't be angry, Fred. <laughs> Mel, the party wouldn't back you for president if you were George Washington's mother. You couldn't win. Now, what about this speech I hear you're making to the National Institute of Businessmen tonight? We didn't authorize that either. Well, but they, they, they asked me. Yes, I'll bet. Well, let's see the speech. Well, it's, uh, it's the old number five. Uh-huh. Isn't that the one you delivered in Detroit on December 6, 1941? Oh, I had the honor, yes. Isn't it about time you cut out that part where you laugh at the possibility of war with Japan? <laughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, United States Senator Melvin G. Ashton speaking. Washington? Yes, yes, put it through, put it through. It's Mama. Yes, all right, I'm leaving. But remember, Mel, forget the White House. I'll see you later. Uh, goodbye, Fred. Uh, oh, uh, uh, hello? Uh, hello? Uh, Mama? Yes, yes, everything's fine, Mama. Uh, uh, the White House? Oh, no, no, Mama. I- I'm not going to be president. No, <laughs> no, I guess you won't be able to tear down that new balcony. <laughs> Yes, oh, yes, yes, Mama, I'm writing, writing everything down in my diary. See, you know what, Mama? I'm an Indian now. Yes, member of a, member of a tribe. What? Oh, no, Mama, don't worry. I won't let them lay a hand on your new hairdo. (laughs) Yes, Mama. Yes, Mama. Mr. Gibson, there's a Miss Valerie Shepard to see you. Shepard? Look, I'm very busy. I... What does she look like? Oh, well, send her right in. Mr. Gibson? Well, what can I do for you? Well, you remember Bill Fisher from Plainville, don't you? Why, of course. Well, Bill said to say hello, and uh, he thought with your connections you might help me get a room here in the hotel. A hotel room it is. Uh, how is Bill, the old paratrooper? <laughs> Did he ever get into politics? Oh, in a small way. That was always Bill's big beef, politics. In the army, he always said he'd clean out the crooks and clowns. Oh, uh, by the way, the senator from ye old home state is staying right here in the hotel. Senator Ashton? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, I'd just love to meet him. Oh, lady, you've met me. Let's not push our luck. (laughs) And if you're a good girl, I'll take you to hear Senator Ashton tonight. Big speech for big businessmen. You'll love it. And in conclusion, may I say, it is with pride and humility that I have been permitted to serve this proud republic, this brightest jewel in the diadem of nations. And now, if there are any questions, I should be glad to answer them. Frankly, completely, and to the best of my humble ability. Great news story you're getting, huh, Poppy? Yeah, the senators run the gamut from tedium to monotony. Miss Shepard seems to be enjoying it. Oh, I think he's just grand. <laughs> Uh-oh, watch this. I planted the note that's being handed to old wooden shoes. Where, where, where? What's this? A note? Well, yes, and a, a very embarrassing note it is. I must confess, I, I didn't expect such a question. But I shall answer it with the same candor in which it is asked. Senator Ashton, if the nomination for president were offered to you, would you accept? My friends, as you all know, I am a simple, God-fearing, plain-talking man. So I say to you, and I cannot put this too strongly, I am not a candidate for the presidency. 
But if the voice of the people of these United States, this brightest jewel in the diadem of mankind, should ring out over the land and say, come, then I can only bow my head to the inevitable and say in all humility, I will. Ashton, you ungrateful dog. Oh, oh, boss, <laughs> come in. I, uh, I was just going to bed. Why, you idiot. What do you mean saying you're not a candidate for the nomination? But, Fred... No member of the party has the right to deny that he's a candidate unless he is one. Oh, well... <laughs> well, well, maybe I am, Fred. On what qualifications? All the qualifications. They're written here in, in, in this newspaper clipping. Ah, you're crazy. Well, look, this, this is what an editorial writer says. First, the candidate should have been born in lowly circumstances. Were you born in a log cabin? No, but our roof leaked a little. <laughs> Go on. Second, he should have a family. Well, I've got three fine sons and four splendid daughters. Holy Ike, you have seven secretaries? Yes. <laughs> well, the third point is that the candidate should have a dog. I have a dog, Fred. I hate the sight of him, but I have one. <laughs> Fourth, you can stop right there. I happen to be boss of this party, and I'm telling you straight, you are not going to be president. Well, then... Then, Fred, I have something to tell you. Well? I, uh... I keep a diary. I have for 35 years. Well, that makes you about the oldest high school girl in America. <laughs> what do you put in it? Everything. Well, that's... Uh, everything? Everything? Everything. But, uh, not, uh, everything, Mel. In detail. Not the incident in Boston. Yes, and the one in Detroit, too. And St. Louis. Oh, you bucket brain lunatic. Where's that diary? No use, Fred. I am keeping it. If that stuff gets out, they can beat us with bathless groggins. <laughs> You're wasting your breath, Fred. What do you mean? You know, Fred, owning a nice little diary is like owning a nice little atom bomb. Even if you never do anything with it, it's a comfort just to know it's there. I'll see you in the White House, Fred. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Senator Was Indiscreet. Starring William Powell with Peggy Dow. And to complete our political news roundup, Senator Melvin Gassaway Ashton left today on a speaking tour of the nation. The senator is uh, not a candidate for the nomination and is understood to be making the tour because he likes to undress in Pullman berths. <laughs> Savannah, Georgia, Senator Melvin Gassaway Ashton spoke here today saying, Yes, sir, folks, my old grandma was born and bred right here in old Georgia. <laughs> the brightest jewel in the diadem of American states. Now I want the band to strike up the beloved anthem of this sovereign state, and I want you all to rise as it plays Marching Through Georgia. <laughs> Houston, Texas. In a political speech here today, Selva Senator Melvin Gassaway Ashton said, Yes, partners, my old grandma, bless her heart, was born and bred right here in the great state of Texas. And if I'm elected, I promise you that within 60 days, you'll have your independence from Mexico. <laughs> Please pass the biscuits. Kansas City, Missouri. As always... Senator Ashton has again faced an issue squarely. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not for inflation. I am not for deflation. But ladies and gentlemen, I am wholeheartedly for flation. <laughs> New York City. 
The surprise of the week has been Senator Melvin Ashton's wildcat raid on the political scene, which has more than doubled his popularity. The senator returned to New York today after a triumphant swing through the South and Southwest. Well, it's been some trip, huh, Senator Ashton? Oh, fine, fine, my boy. Uh, uh, except for one thing. What's that? Uh, that young uh, newspaper woman friend of yours, Miss uh, McNaughton. Huh? Why does she insist upon referring to me in her column as Senator Ashcan? <laughs> Look, she's lousing up my campaign, too. I'm in love with her. Lou, hmm? what about me buying her a nice little present this afternoon? Uh, something uh, costly. Nah, nah, it's no use. It's like trying to bribe Dick Tracy. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Lou. Hello, Valerie. Heard from Bill Fisher lately? Uh-huh, I had a letter today. Well, how is Bill? Uh, just dandy. Yeah? Here, I, I want you to meet the Mahatma. Senator Ash, uh, Ashton, uh, <laughs> this is a constituent, Miss Valerie Shepard. Well, well, well. <laughs> a sweet little flower from my own woodland. Senator, the first vote I ever cast, I cast for you. Ah, the madness of youth. Over here, I've uh, sit down. Oh. Sit down, my dear, sit down. Holy you. cow, look at the time. I got a date with Poppy. Uh, pardon me, folks, while I further our public and private relations. <laughs> tell me, Poppy, oh mystic one, look deep into your martini and tell me what the future holds in store. I'm looking. What do you see? One dyspeptic-looking olive. That's my future? And I hope you choke on it, Lou Gibson. Oh, Poppy, why don't you forget Ashton for a few minutes? I'm going to find some way to break up that clown's act if I have to commit grand larceny. What about us? What about our marriage? Look into your drink, old mystic one, and tell me what the future holds in store. One pickled onion. And that pet is just about the size of it. Not one hair of this golden head shall you touch until Melvin G. Ashton gets dumped on his senatorial kisser. And that, believe me, won't be too long. Hello, Mel. Ah, Lou, my boy. Where's Valerie? Oh, uh, she left. And uh, I had some shopping to do. A little gift. A Poppy McNaughton, Lou. Yeah? Yes. Right here in the drawer. A solid gold mesh bag. Never was a woman who could resist one. It's a... Uh, uh... Lou. What's the matter? Why, it's... Why, it... It's gone. What's gone? Why, the, the diary. It's gone. What diary? The record of my political career. Of the party's activities. Oh, no. If that hits the newspapers... Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Larceny? She said she'd commit larceny. Who? Poppy. You wait here, I got an idea. Oh, Lou. Lou, I'm ruined. Ruined. Uh, now, Senator, don't get hysterical. Now, just stay calm. Uh, calm. Uh... Oh, hello, Mr. Houlihan. Mr. Kelly. Hello, Lou. Hello, Gibson. Uh, I'll check with you, Mel. Fred, something terrible has happened. Mel, don't you know what you've done? Your popularity is zoomed, and the party wants to nominate you for President of the United States. Oh, but Fred, Fred, the diary. Forget the diary. What about the diary? It's gone. Stolen. Why, I ought to break every bone in your stupid body. Joe. Yeah, boss? Get on the phone. Put plan A into action. It's a yellow alert. Well, you think we'll need the red alert? I don't know yet. Uh, well, what's the red alert? That's when they're coming after you with ropes. <laughs> uh, give me Preston 96161. Well, Ashton, you've really done it this time. Hello, hello, hello Theodore. This is you know who. <laughs> hey, Theodore, I want you to contact certain parties and tell them to pack and stand by for a red alert. Red alert. Ready? Honest John McCaffrey in Boston. Honest John Brancuso in Philadelphia. Honest John Ginsburg in Albany. Honest John Frostman in... Lou, you 
use your head. If I had the diary, it would already be in print. This is a newspaper, you Come know. Come on, Poppy. Stop stalling. So help me, Lou. I haven't got the diary. Yeah, probably some other conniving woman. Only a woman could be low enough to pull a trick like this. What about that corn-fed Theta Barra? That Valerie gal? Valerie? No. Oh, she's just a friend of a friend of mine, Bill Fisher. He's not the kind of a guy who... Oh, Mother, how could you raise such a stupid child? Idea? Well, Bill's an old Ashton hater from way back. And that girl shows up just when... when... Come on, we gotta find Valerie. Honest John Vincent in Oklahoma City and Honest John Farron in San Francisco and 5% Harrigan in St. Louis. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you got that, Theodore? Right. And look, Theodore, there are no extradition treaties between the United States and the following countries. Outer Mongolia, Greenland, Lower Slobovia, and Little America. A plane's leave for Tibet from San Francisco daily at 1.20 a.m., plane's from Mexico no. leave... Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, Fred. I'm afraid I have a very unpleasant duty to perform. Now, now look, Fred. It's no use. You've... Got to resign from the Senate. Resign? But, but what about my family? They'll have to resign, too. <laughs> but, but how are we going to live? Off your interest, on your capital. What capital? What capital? You've been in politics for 35 years and you haven't any capital? <laughs> how could I have, Fred? How did I know that income tax bill I introduced meant me, too? <laughs> well, you'll have to go to Work?? Work? But, Fred, I'm a senator. Well, you've got to stop being a senator. Oh, no, Fred. No. Either the party figures out a way for me to make a living, or I won't resign. Hey, hey, they need a dog catcher in Peoria. <laughs> oh, that's out. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've got it. You can be a, a sports czar, like in baseball. Well? The duties will be relatively simple, Senator. Three hours work, one day a week. Oh, never mind the duties. What's the pay? Oh, around 150000 150000 I say, that's more than president. <clears throat> hello? Oh, oh, oh uh, hello, Mama. Uh, Mama, uh, you know what? I'm not going to be a president. I'm going to be a czar. <laughs> yes, but Mama... No, Mama, you, you won't have to drink vodka. <laughs> Look, 150,000 a year, Mama. Yes, Mama. Yes, Mama. <laughs> Okay, Poppy, here's Valerie's room. She must have the diary. Why, Lou and Miss McNaughton. Aha, uh -huh. all packed and ready to leave town. Is, uh, is something wrong? Sister, something is very wrong. Huh? Hold her, Lou. I'll check her bags. Oh, no. No, you can't do that. We're doing it. I should have known that Bill Fisher sent you down to fish for something to pin on Ashton. No, here's the diary. Oh, let's have it. Oh, no, you don't. It's mine now. Oh, oh Poppy, you double-crossing heel. Uh, 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 you stay away from me. You wouldn't hit a woman. Give me that diary. Oh, no, let go of me, you! Hello? Oh, hello, Lou. Oh, I see. Well, all right. Well, who was that? Lou Gibson. He's got the diary back. Wow, you've done it again, boss. Yes, Mel, laugh. Be happy. You can be president now. Yeah, but how can I afford it? I've just taken a $50,000 cut in salary. Oh, but Mel, they give you a house to live in, and on rainy days you can show your own movies in the White House projection room. Cowboy pictures? Yeah, yeah. Hop along, Cassidy. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> Good old Mel. I knew you wouldn't let us down. But I, I, I better call Mama. Oh, I'll get that. Lou, where's the diary? Have you got it? I got it, all right. Shh, shh. I, I'm talking to Mama. H hello, Mama? Well, Mama, I'm not going to be a czar. No, I've decided to become president. Yes, 
Yes, I know. It's only a hundred thousand a year, Mama, but it's the best I can do. And besides, think of the fishing. Yes, Mama. Yes, Mama. Do I understand that Lemonhead is really going to be president? Yes, now that you've got the diary. I, I haven't got the diary. The, you haven't, but you said that oh, you... Oh, j- j- just a minute, Mama. The diary will shortly be in the possession of one Poppy McNaughton, a member of the Fourth Estate. The newspapers? Yeah, it'll be in the front page in an hour. So long, boys. Uh, Joe? Uh. Bell, start moving. The alert just turned red. I'll give the alarm. Come on, Joe, let's get out of here. Hello? Mama? I'm, I'm not going to be president after all. Hey, you, you better start packing, Mama. Yes, we're, we're taking a trip to Outer Mongolia. <laughs> Outer Mongolia, Mama. Proudest jewel in the diadem of Asia. People vote there, Mama. And if I hear their call, if they should say to me, Melvin G. Ashton, come... Then I'll listen, Mama. Oh, don't worry, Mama. We'll make it yet. Yes, Mama. Yes, Mama. William Powell will return in just a moment. Here's a reminder to tune in again next week when, for the first time on the air, you'll hear the exciting drama Crisscross, Cross, starring Burt Lancaster in his original role. Now, here again is tonight's star... William Powell. Thank you. Thank you. You know, all of us who face the motion picture cameras owe a great debt to the directors of Hollywood. We're very humbly aware that without their assistance, skill, and knowledge, our pictures never could really be made. Now it's my pleasure to introduce not only the director of many wonderful films, but the president of the Screen Directors Guild, George Marshall. Thank you, and thank you very much, Bill. I was anxious to be here tonight because this marks the beginning of a new series of Screen Directors Playhouse shows at a new time. Well, I want to wish you and all the directors the best of luck, George. You've been bringing some swell motion picture entertainment to the microphone. Well, thank you again, Bill. You know, that must be quite a position you have, being president of the Screen Directors Guild. (laughs) Well, it wasn't easy getting to be president, Bill. I really had to fight for the job. Yeah, whom did you fight? Oh, a fellow by the name of Melvin Gassaway Ashton. (laughs) Yes, but George, look at the prestige and the salary. (laughs) Yes, that is something to look forward to. I would say about 43 cents a year. Think Mama would be interested? I I think that proudest jewel in the diadem of womankind would say (laughs) fool. Then I guess I've still got the job. And speaking for the Screen Directors Guild, I hope that all our old listeners will be tuning in on Monday nights and that we'll be making a lot of new friends. We'll do our best to make it worth your while. Good night, everyone. Good night, Bill. Good night. (laughs) And good night to you, William Powell and George Marshall. Senator was in the street is a Nunnally Johnson production presented through the courtesy of Universal International Studios, now releasing Sword in the Desert, starring Dana Andrews, Marta Torrin, and Stephen McNally. William Powell appeared by arrangement with Metro Golden Mayer, producers of The Red Danube, starring Walter Pidgeon, Ethel Barrymore, and Peter Lawford. Peggy Dow will soon be seen in the Universal International picture, The Big Frame, also starring Scott Brady, John Russell, and Dorothy Hart. George Marshall's latest production for Paramount is Fancy Pants, starring Bob Hope and Lucille Ball. Included in tonight's cast were Paul Fries, Bill Conrad, Gene Bates, Jay Novello, Ed Max, Rita Lyons, Jack Crushon, and Dan Riss. The Senator was indiscreet, was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley, with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking, and inviting you to listen again next week when we present... Screen Director's Playhouse, production, Criss Cross, star, Burt Lancaster, director, Robert C. Otmack. <laughs> You're tuned for the stars on NBC.